Hello there. What is going on, everybody? Today, I'm bringing to you a top 10 list of my favorite Star Wars tabletop games. Now, I will caveat that I have not played every Star Wars game that's out there, and I'm only talking about tabletop games, so games like Battlefront uh, you know, are not being included in this list. Um, and I think a tabletop game list is important for Star Wars fans right now because we really don't have much in the way of video games. We don't have EA actually using their license to make video games or allow people to make video games. So all we've really got is tabletop games. And so I'm going to be counting down my top 10 Star Wars games that you can play on your tabletop without the need of an Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, or phone, because smartphone games, I don't I just don't like them. Um, also, with that being said, I am giving away a Star Wars Force FX lightsaber in the form of an Amazon gift card. There are more details for that on Crabok.com. But if you would like to enter to win that, basically, you just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite Star Wars tabletop game is. So, with that said, let's jump into number 10. The Star Wars customizable card game by Decipher. This is pretty old school, uh, and if you guys are as old as me, maybe you remember this. This was my, I think maybe my first Star Wars game, at least outside of like a Nintendo 64, Shadows of the Empire kind of game. Um, this one goes, it's such a deep cut for me because this was, there was so much information on these cards and it was such a fun game to collect. I got into this game, uh, you know, Magic the Gathering was out at the time. And Magic had recently been banned from my house. I had been banned from playing Magic the Gathering as a child because my mother saw the original Unholy Strength and it had a pentagram behind this dude. It looked like Glenn Danzig. And she was just like, it's the devil. It's the devil Bobby Boucher. And so I was not allowed to play Magic anymore after she saw that. And so uh, my attention was, you know, needed a new place to focus. And Decipher had recently come out with... Uh, the Star Trek customizable card game and the Star Wars customizable card game. And I got into both of them and I think in the same year. They were I think Star Trek came out first and this one came out right afterwards. And boy did I love it. I mean it was a time where I think the special edition or the spe, you know the, the special editions were were getting re-released um soon and there was talk of George Lucas working on the prequels episode 1 like leaks would come out in Star Wars Insider magazine, and then this was out. And oh, every year around Christmas time, Star Wars would play on on TV. And so you know, like, even if you had it on VHS, it was better to watch it on TV because the v VCRs were. It was just a great. It was a cool time, and uh, there wasn't a whole lot of Star Wars resources out there. So there's so much information jam packed into this game. Just loved it. Collected it more than I played it, and there were a lot of sets. Um, but yeah, love, love this game. The Star Wars customizable card game by Decipher at number 10. I could probably talk for a long time about this game, but uh, yeah. I don't think it was actually the best game to play, but it was a really cool game to collect. And there was a lot to it, too. Every new expansion added a lot of stuff. So, all right, let's jump into number 9. Star Wars Destiny. Uh, you know, my more recent favorite card game for Star Wars. And... Um, I really, really dove hard into this game when it came out. I mean, cards and dice, you know, not um, well, about one out of five cards in a booster back would have a die that would go with it. Your rares basically had dice. And, you know, the dice are pretty cool. Like, you play the card, you get its die, you activate the card, you get to roll out its die. There's a little bit of luck involved in it because you may roll the blank on that die. But uh, one, one of the things that was really cool about Star Wars Destiny is that... Here's a game that was like basically the first Fantasy Flight game to bring all of the timelines into the same game. And this mean includes the Clone Wars. Like, had this not happened, you know, maybe we this kind of laid the groundwork for all these other games now finally having access to the Clone Wars as a, you know, as a timeline. Because for, you know, for the longest time it was just Galactic Civil War. Galactic Civil War. You know, and then when the new movies came out, you had a little bit of that, but people were like, well, what about you know, what about the Clone Wars? And when this came out, it brought all of that. Everything was fair game. It was able to merge everything together. So that was another really cool aspect of Destiny. Um, and I think the only real 
well, there's two, I guess, downsides to Destiny, though. One is because it's a collectible game. Some people aren't a fan of that model. It gets expensive. And then two, uh, I think the fact that it's not all about, like, damaging your opponent. Like, one of the key concepts of how to win is to run people out of cards. And that kind of started to turn me off of the game. After enough people were playing that way, I was just like, ah, I don't want to build a deck. I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars trying to trying to build a deck and then you your what your deck does is just remove the cards so i can't even play these cards that i've you know acquired to get so just not a big fan of that mill and discard style of gameplay you know denying your opponent the ability to actually play the game isn't fun for the person who is being denied so but the other half of the game where you are actually rolling for damage and upgrading and you know putting lightsabers on characters and all of that it was really fun for a while for me um all right now that was number nine let's talk about number eight is star wars risk and this is the newer version of star wars risk this i believe came out in 2015 and uh there have been other versions of risk but this one is cool because it's taking the full battle of endor the ground battle the space battle and the jedi battle in the emperor's throne room luke versus vader and all three are happening at the same time. And it's not so much... There's also a Black Series version of this, like a deluxe version as well. Um, and it's not so much playing like Risk. It's actually playing like it's like a whole different game with some loose inspirations of, of Risk. But it's really not like Risk at all. It's really like its own game. Um, really solid game. It's only two players. But... Uh, it's enjoyable, and there's a multiple different avenues you can take. You can focus more on the ground battle. You can focus more on the Jedi battle. You can focus more on the space battle. Um, but you're trying. The rebels are trying to blow up the Death Star, and well, the Empire's trying to not let that happen. Very fun game. Um, and uh, Star Wars Risk. Let's go to number seven. Number seven. The uh, well, I, I, basically, it's the Star Wars RPG by Fantasy Flight Games. But I've chosen Force and Destiny. There are multiple. Um, rule sets. There's different aspects. You know, the this this is just one flavor of the Star Wars RPG, and this one particularly, um, I chose this one because it has the the Force in it, and this is actually the the core rulebook that I have. Um, but there's also one that focuses more on like you know Edge of the Empire, and then there's some that focus more on like pilots and ships, and um, every aspect of Star Wars are kind of covered in different flavors of the RPG, and it's just a great system. It's it really one of the things that makes it so good is the interpretation of the dice, allowing a narrative that both includes the players and the game master together. Because you're encouraged to talk with the game master and, and interpret these dice. Like I would, I think that these dice should, you know, even though I failed the roll, I had enough advantage that maybe I, I missed with my blaster. But I didn't hit my the enemy, but I hit the, the control panel beside him or her. Um, maybe that could cause you know the door to lock, and now the other bad guys can't get into the room. You know, so like like cool things can happen even when you fail. And it's not really about winning and losing; it's about crafting a storyline. You know, as a group, and it does this really really well. And it's it puts less pressure on the game master. And it gets everybody talking and more involved. So a lot of fun. Only downside, you do kind of have to get the same group of people to continue to meet up and actually show up. And that can be tricky. But that's the way RPGs go. All right. Number six. Imperial Assault. Imperial Assault is probably the best value you will ever get in a box. It's an expensive box. It's like a $100 box, right? We're getting so much in this game, uh, in this box. It's really three different games in one. Um, at its core, though, it's it's a campaign-based game. One player is going to play as the Empire, the rest of the people, up to four other players are going to play as different rebel heroes, and they're going to be going through you know, a, a series of adventures, and whether they win or lose, it'll change the way the story you know, develops. Um, but now that there's an app for it, you can play it differently. You can play the apps campaign, and you can play it a full co-op that way. And of course, there's also skirmish cards, so you can play this as a skirmish 
battle. You can build an army, go up against somebody else's army, and challenge them. And you can get all of that in this core set. Well, minus the app. You can download the app, but you can use the core set in the app. Um, but you're getting so much, so many units, so many you know variations. There's a lot of stuff you can do um, with this core set. It's just absolutely... It, it's it's a kind of overwhelming how much stuff you get because even though even you get units that you can use that don't even have minis they have like little tokens that you can use um you know in this core set as well that you, yeah, there's just so much here and it's really a good game it's a shame that they're really not doing much for it anymore i don't know if they're actually making any more product for this game but that doesn't matter it doesn't diminish how awesome this game is how much gameplay there is here I actually ran through a couple of solo campaigns. I don't think I completed any of them, but I played this one a lot. And I, this one you can play, um, you know, by yourself or with just one other person. Um, and you can play a competitively skirmish list building. I mean, it's, it's harder to do that now, but I think this is always going to have a lot of advantage, uh, a lot of benefit to to those who want to run campaigns. And it's, and it's beautiful. We've got great minis, too. Great, great minis. So... Imperial Assault is number six. Number five. Number five, X-Wing. X-Wing Miniatures game. I'm mean, including both first and second editions. I'm just covering like the game as a whole. Um, this is the, the game that kind of started so much for me. This, uh, like, it's the game that caused me to even you know, make this YouTube channel um, is X-Wing. Uh, I, I first saw X-Wing, you know, um, I was on tabletop with Will Wheaton. And, uh, and they were playing this, and they got some of the rules wrong, but they were having a really good time, and I was just blown away by, like, this was my first tabletop game, I, uh, you know, at least of the modern era. This kind of brought me in. This was my gateway game to so many other games. It got me in to meet people in my local community. It got me to make friends that I have now that I wouldn't have made otherwise. Um, it got me to kind of open up and come out of my shell more and be more social and make more friends and discover other games as well, but... Boy, and it got me to spend a lot of money with Fantasy Flight games, that's for sure. But this game is definitely... Uh, I have a lot of history with this game, and it's... Uh, it's uh, it's nuts. So, X-Wing, 2nd edition, and also 1st edition. I kind of had better memories of 1st edition, though. That's for sure. All right. Uh, next up... Oh, Star Wars Epic Duels coming in at number 4. This game, this game, if you can find this game anywhere, pick it up because this game is out of print, has been out of print for a very, very long time. Made by Milton Bradley, of all people. Um, came out after episode two, so it doesn't have any of the episode three and beyond stuff in there, so there's no Grievous, but this game is like a, a free-for-all, just... You know, everybody for themselves. Let's let's put them all into this arena. Fight. Last person standing wins. And it's got all kinds. It's got Darth Maul. It's got um, Darth Vader. It's got Luke. It's got Han and Chewie. Jango Fett. It's got it's got a lot of. It's got Mace Windu. It's got a lot of different characters, um, both from the prequels and from the original trilogy. Um, obviously, nothing from the sequel trilogy yet, but. Man, this game was just so much fun because it was just a true skirmish multiplayer. Like, you, how many people we got? We got six? Okay, everybody sit down. We're all, boom, fight to the death. Everybody. It, it was just that fun. It was simple. The gameplay was fairly simple. And it had pre-painted miniatures in it uh, and different custom decks for each person. Whoever you chose, you had a different deck of cards. They all had a different play style. Um, and it had different maps. It was just just a super fun game. You didn't have to take too seriously. I loved it. And as a matter of fact, um, I wish they would make another type of game like this. I, I really I, I had an, a chance to get one of these too. I found I, it was getting to a bidding more with somebody, and it would have been a good price. And I just kind of kind of stopped paying attention and missed out on it. But I need to get a copy of this. Hopefully, you know, one in decent condition. So, Epic Duels, number four. Number three, Star Wars Legion. This one, ah, man, this one changed changed my life. This one is, um, had such a profound impact on, like, changing the way I looked at, at, at like, hobby gaming, tabletops, 
skirmishes. Uh, it got me, you know, it's the first type of minis I really had to assemble. Um, I had to, you know, start buying glue because uh, they didn't come glued to the bases. And, and it was, you know, it was my first foray into, you know, mini gaming being more of like a hobbyist, you know, having to actually paint everything. I, granted, I painted, I painted stuff before, uh, but this was like a different level. You know, it was a lot more serious. It was now like, oh, I have to choose what type of gun do I want to put. I had to make decisions like how do, you know, and so the assembly you know it's not as as in-depth as 40k but you know it was like it was like an in-between and this one got me building terrain like this one this game and and it uses the terrain so well you know and it was my first step into an even larger world too because um it's i just love the way that it you know uses terrain i love the the way that it plays it's like it, it's like FFG, uh, they as they keep making games, they're getting better and better and applying lessons learned from previous games. And uh, and this game is really, really solid. It's a lot of fun. I don't play it as competitively as, uh, as other folks do. Um, I, I don't feel like it lends itself as well to tournaments just because of the nature that virtually all terrain is going to be different. So every table, you know, it's harder to standardize Legion. It's a little more... For me, it seems like it's a little bit more of a casual, friendly, let's plan up and play a game kind of game. But at the same time, you know, I, I, I will still play in tournaments from time to time. But I, I kind of just look at this one more as a game for fun. For me personally, I like to play it more for fun than competitively. But, but it's beautiful. It's a beautiful game. My only criticism is, uh, why don't we have an ad at yet? I thought the whole point of making this game was to put an ad at in it, and they made it at such an awkward scale that I don't know if you can ever put an ad at in it. <sighs> yeah. All right, let's move on to number two. Number two, Rebellion. Greatest board game of all time. For two people. Greatest two-player board game of all time absolutely love this game i absolutely love this game this game is star wars in a box and it's actually gets improved with the, the expansion uh as well which i probably need to actually do a full-blown review of one of these days because i've had it forever i have not not done a review i meant to a long time ago i did not do it so i will probably get around to doing that but but this is one of those games that you will be talking about with your friend, like you, you play this with a friend, have a couple hours set aside, you know, and and a week later you still be talking about that game of rebellion where oh my gosh, where this happened and that happened, and oh and you blew up you blew up Kashyyyk and all the Wookies were so mad and then and you know and, and, and then Chewbacca and Han Solo were on that planet and you captured Chewbacca and the Emperor turned him to the dark side and he was the last surviving Wookiee and you made him a Sith and. You know, like it's 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 so cool the things you can do, and it feels good, and it doesn't matter if you win or lose because playing the game feels good. You're having a great time from the very beginning when you first set up. The setup's gonna be different every time. The rebels they pick where they want to hide the rebel base. It can be anywhere on this board. Like so, before you even start playing, you're doing fun stuff and you're making the game different. It's just I I can't say enough good things about this game. It's it's one of the greatest board games of all time, and uh, I. I absolutely am infatuated with this game. I love it. Love, 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 love this game. And my number one, if you have not already guessed, if you followed me on YouTube for a while, you probably know my number one Star Wars tabletop game, Star Wars Armada. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> it's funny because when this game was coming out, I wasn't even sure I was going to play it. I was just like, ah, I already play X-Wing. I don't want another spaceship game. And I really was kind of on the fence about it. I really was on the fence. And then I think like four days before the core set was actually coming out, I saw like they, they teased Wave 2, which was going to be the, the Home 1 and then the Imperial Star Destroyer. And I was just like, oh, oh, that looks really good. Oh, all right. All right. I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. I watched Team Covenant's uh, coverage on it to kind of help get me caught up to speed like with the day or two before it came out and then, then I went and picked up my corset brought it home I was like oh this is beautiful and I was blown away and ever since then I have uh, 
grown and grown uh, to be more of an Armada addict, and I absolutely love this game. I'm not that good at it. I actually lose a lot more than I, <laughs> than I would expect to, especially lately. But, um, man, I just, I have, I don't think any other game has given me the, the excitement and the immense satisfaction that this one does from setup to completion. It's just, it's a beautiful cinematic space opera taking place before your eyes and you're watching these ships set up and you're watching these ships move and form on each other and get closer and closer and now they're in shooting range and now it's gorgeous and oh they're they're all my ships are gone oh and then you shake hands all right we got let's do it again <laughs> and so uh and this one is getting ready to have the superstar destroyer and i am super ready for that and that's it, guys. That's my top 10. So uh, let me know what you think. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, you can hop in my Discord if you would like to talk some more about any of these great games. And uh, a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon. You guys definitely help make this possible. If you're interested in joining the team, there's some links to that and other things in the description below. So check that out. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.